So today to discuss about uh, development and brand life cycle of hotel and brand, of course, um, I would like first to address what are the parameters of the brand life cycle and possibly its revitalization. For this, of course, we need the brand perspective. And, and please help me welcoming Amir Lababidi, Managing Director of Development for Hilton Middle East and North Africa. We have as well Eli Milki, Vice President of Development, Radisson, Middle East, Cyprus and Greece. Oh. Paul Diab, Vice President of Operations for Louvre Hotel. And, and of course, uh, if, you are, if you are to revitalize or make changes in a brand, someone has to implement it on the asset. And this is why we have Spencer Wiley, CEO of Compass Project Management. Thanks, man. Okay. So on, on the topic of uh, brand life cycle, that implies that maybe a brand is permanent or not. And um, I would like to ask Amir from the panel, what are his views on the topic of brand permanence. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Damien. Is that clear? Um, right. So I think the, the kind of the topic of you know brand life cycle. Hopefully, the, the brand shouldn't end. If it does, then there's a problem. Um, you know, if you if you look at brand revitalization, I think that's really key to making sure that that brand remains successful um, and relevant to uh, to the developer and to the. Uh, to the consumer. If you, if you take a step back and you know, talk about how you actually get to the stage of revitalization and start looking at how the kind of brand is created from, you know, from, from, from the beginning and, and why. Um, so you typically look at your, your brand scape and your brand portfolio and if there is a white space in that portfolio um, that doesn't serve a particular <coughs> segment of the market that has developed, um, and, and you know, that segment needs a particular type of product, then you need to assess and evaluate, is there enough scale to actually support investment into, uh, into either the development, organic development of, uh, of your own brand, or if you go through into the acquisition uh, of, uh, of another brand from, from another, uh, another company. And once you've kind of taken that decision, which comes about as a result of you know in um, discussions with with the development community with the with the um, financing community with our guests with the team that are on property with the uh, the team that are at the corporate level and get all of their feedback is is does is there sufficient justification to actually develop a brand or acquire a brand for that space in your portfolio and if the answer is, is yes to that, then you continue and you go in to develop the actual brand itself, um, which would kind of <coughs> take the form of you know, a brand platform, which is really what are the key, um, what are the brand pillars for that platform? What's the key essence of it? What's its, what's its personality? What's its positioning? How, how does that brand want to be known uh, in, in the market? And that again is, you know, that's a kind of iterative process of, 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 of engagement. Once you've got that and you know what those kind of key brand pillars are, then you look at um, how is that brand platform going to manifest itself in the physical? And you know, that's through um, you know, the look and feel, uh, through the service style, uh, and how you um, ultimately are, are going to position that in terms of the, the, the physical um, space. And finally, probably you know, the most important part, sorry to go on, is, is how you communicate that to, to the market, right? To, to show that this is a brand that's relevant to the development community and to the guest. And that marketing piece is essential because you really want to create a brand that really resonates um, uh, strongly and you create a strong emotional attachment to the guest and to the development community and you create that, that brand uh, loyalty. And the, the question about revitalization is if you don't continually assess that brand's position in the market because the markets evolve, which markets do, and demand, um, uh, uh, demand um, you know, expectations from guests evolve, 
that has to be reflected in the, in the, in the brand itself. So you go through that process of, of brand discovery, assessing the market, speaking to the, the development community, speaking to, to <coughs> guests, and you know, getting that feedback, and then going through the, the process of um, uh, adjusting your, your brand platform to, um, to those changes in the environment. So part of the brand platforms, of course, will be technology. It plays a major role, and with the rapid evolution of technology. Um, Eli, what are your views on the technology update needed for brand revitalization? Yeah, if I, if I may uh, add to what Amir is saying, if you want if to break it down <coughs> slightly differently, if you look at the history of all our brands, whether it's uh, Hilton or Radisson or Louvre as examples, these brands have been there for decades, and there's a reason why they've been there for decades. It's because of that revitalization, that relaunch, that redesign. So when you, break, when you look at the second point, you, Amir mentioned the consumer and the owner. When you, these brands have survived because of redesign over the years, uh, reconfiguration, making them more relevant for the investor, more real estate efficient, uh, more functional. And for the consumer, with the IT, when it comes to the marketing, you adapt to new trends and new changes and new behaviors. And these, this is an ongoing process for both the consumer and the developer. We, as hotel operators, we, you owners, for instance, spend millions and hundreds of millions on your assets. We spend our hundreds of millions on our IT platform, on our marketing, on our branding. And the and story, story continues. <clears throat> One last point is, uh, Amir mentioned uh, mergers and acquisitions, for instance. Another way of doing that is either um, developing a brand that's been stagnant for a long time, a brand that needs revival. And we, Amir has examples. We have examples of recent acquisitions, recent strategic development agreements that have led us to relaunch new brands into the market and have given them new life. That's another way to look at it as well. <clears throat> because ultimately, management agreements are like 20, 25 years. So, of course, after such a long period of time, 10, 15 years, what was relevant 10 years ago is no longer relevant today. Um, and Paul, you were talking about what, um, what in Louvre you can, you can do to bring back life to those brands. Yeah, exactly. Now, the, the life cycle of, of, the, uh, of the asset are increasing because of sustainability, <coughs> because of the, of the new technology uh, that is the, the building the, the, the asset itself. So th what used to be a 10, 15 years uh, contract, 20 years contract, now <coughs> it's going uh, beyond the 20 year contract because of the uh, new codes uh, you know, implemented for the construction from the beginning, the, the new uh, assets. So that's where the uh, life cycle of the, of the brand as well by continuing having a longer, a longer contract and extending the contract or the brand uh, life cycle extent. But also, uh, as we see, we talk about the uh, improvement of the brand or the changing of the brand to meet the new requirement like uh, with, with Golden Tulip brand that was redone and re redesigned uh, two, three years ago to meet the new uh, requirement, the new, the new age uh, of the technology that required to have additional IT uh, requirement for the property to, to meet the demand uh, from the uh, consumer and the customer because the, the new customer, the uh, technology is very important for them. Okay, so that's where we, we, we see that the improvement and the life of the contract increasing because of the new uh, technologies and new <coughs> codes <coughs> that of, of, of constructions. Eli, if I can go back to you on, um, on the question, because we, as Amir was saying earlier, you look at the landscape and what is it that you revitalize a brand, you bring in a new brand. There has been an undeniable trend um, lately with big, larger operators of soft brands. Um, is that me? Sorry, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Yes. So course. I'd like to hear your views, especially given yeah. the markets that you have, uh, Greece, yeah. Cyprus perhaps, um, you can... Uh, this goes back to Amir's point on gaps in the market. I think um, <clears throat> even before the pandemic and especially during the pandemic, we realized and we acknowledged that there are so many successful independent properties, local brands, local products, they are so well designed, so well run, all they're lacking is that tailwind, that uh, engine to generate more business from source markets they never received business from. 
uh, it gives them, it allows independent operators to to benefit from the loyalty program, uh, our, our large loyalty program. It allows these uh, uh, these owners and operators to benefit from new channels that they haven't been exposed to in the past. <clears throat> and we launched that recently uh, over the pandemic with Radisson Individuals, and it's picked up over 30 properties over the past two years simply because of the need and that gap in the segment that's been untapped for so long. Um, you feel you see the same with Hilton? Yeah, it is. It's you know similar. I think we have we have three um, we have three collection brands: LXR at the at the luxury level, uh, Cure collection at the upper upscale level, and um, Tapestry collection at the at the upscale level. And and you know as Ellie said, it's really basically about identifying these kind of really unique um, assets, really unique kind of hotels with a strong strong story. Um, that really are differentiated in the market and have, got, have, have, have created really a brand in its own right. And these collection brands are not just a, you know, an opportunity to, to, to find a hotel you know, that, that uh, we can't, you know, that doesn't work with one of our other brands. It's, um, we take a really strategic approach that any, any hotel that comes into one of those collections is, has a very, very strong story, compelling story, because ultimately it's the story that's going to create the emotional attachment to the guests, right? And, and that property is what we call the hero. So our collection brands are basically a principle of, of, of brand sharing between three brands. One is the, the property itself, which has developed its own, its own brand, essentially. The second is, is the, the, the collection brand itself, so it's LXR, Curio, or Tapestry, which is really the advocate and the storyteller of, of that, the, 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 the property itself. And then the third brand is obviously you know, the Hilton brand, which has got the kind of global leading performance engine. It's got the, you know, the quality covenant that the guests expect. So the, the developer knows that he's working with a brand that is endorsed by Hilton and, and obviously kind of mitigates all the development and operational risk. So, and those three brands kind of work together. And, and what it allows us to do and what it allows the owner to do is really unlock the unique aspects of that, uh, of that property and that brand that they've created. And we work with them together to further enhance that and create a truly unique uh, you know, value proposition for that brand. And it follows the same process as we follow you know, if we're creating a brand organically ourselves, right? Is there a gap in the market for that type of, uh, for that type of product? What are the brand pillars? How do we en en enhance that? How do we create the identity around that? And then ultimately, how do we market that um, to, to the guest? And we've done that, you know, and the marketing piece is, you know, it starts even before, you know, the, um, the, the, the property might be kind of complete and ready for operation or ready for, ready for opening. We, we create um, a sense of excitement, you know, before, uh, before it kind of it starts operations by, by selling the story, by telling everybody about the story of that, of that property, and then, you know, moving forward into actually showing live pictures of the property itself. So people are excited about it before they even, even get into it. So, so those soft brands are really, really important. And, and what's really intriguing is that we, we've been so disciplined about which hotels form part of those collections and making sure that they've got a really strong story that they are even uh, competing you know, with the hard brands and rank you know, really highly in terms of, if you look at like the franchise 500 ranking, for example, our collection brands are up there beating you know, some of the best hard brands in the world. So that's how disciplined we are about, you know, this is not just a dumping ground for something that doesn't fit with one of our other brands. These brands are really brands of, of brands, and, and um, that's really kind of the, the, the value proposition there. Um, so, so we, we discussed about re why you should revitalize a brand or why you should introduce a soft brand in the market. But I'd like to understand a bit from, um, uh, from the panel, maybe from uh, Paul or Eli, how is it that you go about revitalizing a brand? We understand why, but how is it that you go? We talk about innovation, marketing, design, funding. Um, maybe you can, um, Eli or Paul, um, Dwelling into that a little bit? Um, sorry, I thought you had directed the question to Paul and I missed the last part of it. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, to both of you. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure, Thank sure. You. The, we talked about brand revitalization, yeah. soft brands. We understand why you need to do it. But as owners, we pay significant uh, fees to brands. And yeah. so it, it's good for us to understand a little bit how you 
spend it and what you spend it on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I said earlier that owners spend their hundreds of millions on the asset itself. Uh, we spend that kind of money on the brand itself and on the IT platform. And we okay. spend it on uh, launching a new logo or uh, re coming up with new designs every five or six years. Uh, launching sustainability initiatives to be more in, in line with the market and market needs and owner needs and uh, banking requirements these days, right? So we have to look at several aspects of the investment process and the funding process and the, and the signing process uh, to, to be able to, to adapt the brand. I mean, I could use examples like um, we touched on sustainability, on, um, on IT, changing uh, behaviors. I mean, a few years ago, there were no apps to make bookings. Now every, every hotel company has an app to make a booking because that's where most of the bookings are coming from. Uh, yeah, I mean, the list goes on. It's a longer, it's a continuous process. It doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah the, also the connectivity of the brand with the market itself and also uh, using the platforms of the social media, the marketing, to make sure that the brand awareness is always there uh, in, in, in the market itself, uh, depending on the uh, media and the, and, and the uh, business mix of each, of each product itself. So pushing to make sure that we have the awareness uh, at all level uh, continuously, as was mentioned, to, to make sure that the, the, the uh, owners, uh, you know, benefit as well from having the, the brand uh, uh, always continuously updating itself and updating the, uh, the image. So, so it's very much about um, communicating your relevance to the owner, to the wide audience. The owner, um, obviously, uh, the consumer and the wider market. And there has been one topic that has been discussed in, the, um, um, in, in this conference quite a bit, of course, is uh, sustainability. And as we go into implementing those changes in being revitalization um, or soft brands uh, into the market, if you are, if you are to implement this, uh, perhaps the sustainability should be uh, a first stance point. Spencer? No, absolutely. Um, sustainability is, well, looking at Saudi Arabia as the, the prime example, um, sustainability is a key pillar of Vision 2030. So all of the, the aspects of bringing your new brands in and bringing Developing your brand are, are critical um, in terms of inbuilt sustainability into the design of your buildings and how the, those buildings are run and managed. Um, what we ensure um, during the sort of the design, design and development stage is to to make sure that the sustainability elements are inbuilt into those base buildings for you guys to come in and manage. Um, there's a there's a whole parity in between. CapEx and OpEx, trying to save as much money up front, trying to save money in the back end as well, in the operational expenditure. It's to make sure that we, we build in something into that base building to make sure that the, those buildings across the lifespan of their building, of their, of their life cycle, ensures that you guys are, are adding value. And there's, there's potentially, and I don't know if you, you guys work it into your model or not, but is there a point um, of shared savings, shared benefits around spending more up front to save more at the back end and sharing that perhaps with your owners or your operators and between, between, your, between yourselves, I guess. But, but this would be mostly for new build projects, right, what you're describing. How would that affect uh, revitalization or refurbishment? So the, there's the opportunity for um, the sustainability. People want to stay in sustainable hotels. Now, is that, is that is a fair comment? Um, and if we can build you buildings that are, are more sustainable, they're more sellable. Um, so it increases your increases your revenue across the lifespan of that building. Well, as you want to uh, extend the life cycle of equipment, as you were saying earlier, I think one one important point as well is that if you you know you want to revitalize or you want to refurbish um, your hotel, but if maintenance has not been done properly, maybe the only money available. It's used for back of house items so, or machinery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Paul, in you, yeah. in the hotels that you operate, how do you ensure that there is uh, enough maintenance so that we, we you have enough sure, money to invest? Yes, exactly. Uh, we need to make sure that we have always uh, <coughs> ongoing maintenance, uh, preventive maintenance. Uh, have uh, the team hands on at, at all levels because this is the only way that we can uh, reduce the or increase the time 
uh, of, of the life of the asset itself uh, and the renovation instead of five years, try to spend, you know, extend it into seven, seven years, uh, you know, uh, with the exceptions, uh, with the technology. The technology you have to <laughs> always revolving and always changing and improving, so we need to do that as well. But when we talk about an, an, an asset on an FF&E and, and the maintenance, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we have our hands on uh, from the team itself. Very good. You, Spencer, you were saying um, the four areas where you actually can make a difference uh, with, with uh, sustainable renovation, if I can call them like that. Yep. You were speaking about energy, water, waste and recycling. Maybe you can give some of the solutions that are available. Yeah, so I mean, um, your asset in use, it will, the cost of the, of the, of the brand to you guys is sort of 50 or 60% of the in-use value is tied up in the utilities, utilities costs. So by us bringing in those sustainable design elements, reducing those costs, um, and making sure that, you know, for the working, in, working and living in the Middle East, obviously water is a massive, massive part of that. What sort of initiatives do you guys bring into your development cycle to make sure that you're, you're taking that box in sustainability to, to reduce um, to reduce the demands and, and costs associated with utilities yeah. across that life cycle. We have, I mean, at, at Hilton, so we have, <laughs> and you were talking about kind of brand re revitalization. ESG, you know, it, it's, it's not only the right thing to do, but it's become, you know, in terms of regulations, it's, it's, it's being more, more and more enforced. Uh, but not only, you know, um, in terms of government regulations, but also the, the banking industry, the, the, the financing industry, you know, they are under more and more pressure as well to, to be financing projects that, you know, that tick this box as well. So, you know, that is it, here to stay. And we, we, you know, and I think Hilton as a company, you know, from its very inception, from its founder, Comrade Hilton, you know, uh, when the company was founded 103 uh, years ago, has, has, this has always been a critical you know, part of Hilton's DNA. Um, so it's not something that Hilton's new to. Um, you know, we've always had that vision that you know, hospitality should make the world um, a better place, that we should you know, uh, be nice to each other and protect the world. Um, so that, that's always been part of, part of our, our history, and it, and it definitely con continues to be and plays a large part in, you know, in, in our brand standards, and, uh, and, and it certainly should do and continue to do so. But we've got, um, we were talking about IT and, you know, and the importance of IT and, and how that is going to, I think in terms of you know, changes to, to the brand, you need to be in control of that IT environment. If you're not in control of that IT space, then you're going to fall behind pretty quickly. If you're not able to adapt to the latest changes in technology or consumer trends, you're going to be, you're going to be out pretty quickly. And uh, you know, Hilton is, is quite unique in that it's got its own kind of IT, um, proprietary IT platform, enables us to roll out technologies you know, quicker than anybody else, enables us to not be at the mercy of any kind of third parties in terms of ongoing maintenance or replacement. Uh, but most importantly, it enables us to, to, or enables our guests to have control over their environment, you know, during their stay, right? They have, they have autonomy over their, over their experience. And that's enabled through that IT, um, through that IT platform. Um, they can, you know, check in uh, through their iPhone. They can um, uh, choose their room on a floor plan. They can you control the HVAC or the, the, the lighting or the television in their room through their phone. And this is, you know, it's not only our industry, it's, it's kind of every industry, right? Every, the, the guest, the, the user wants control. So we're doing that through, through this IT platform that we have. The reason I'm talking about IT is because it doesn't only stop in terms of like a guest experience, we also kind of use it to be able to control the, um, uh, yeah, or the, exactly, the environment within the hotel, right? In terms of waste, uh, water, energy. And we control that through a program called LightStay, which is again a proprietary um, uh, program platform developed by, by Hilton. And what it does is it allows the operations team uh, and uh, to, to actually, in real time, um, identify <coughs> where you know we are, where we're achieving or exceeding the goals that we've set in terms of water, waste, energy consumption, uh, which is a, a really good tool. And, and these these um, uh, 
the lights day, you know, and the KPIs that come out of that are, are, are part of our, you know, uh, KPI. We're not, not only looking at commercials, but also those those KPIs, and that's going to continue to develop. It. And the, the the better the, the technology is, um, you know, the quicker we can we can adapt and control our environment. So there is some um, compelling sustainability argument here um, about savings for ownership. Um, and Spencer, when we were talking about it, you were saying that maybe there are models where those savings can be shared in between ownership and um, uh, hotel companies? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the implementation of sustainability into the, the base buildings has a significant cost to it, potentially. Um, or it's, it's inbuilt through design. And, and good design now doesn't necessarily mean more cost, yeah. but it means that it's, it elongates the, the lifespan of the, of the building. Long it right. elongates... The, the recycling, uh, the recycle um, lifespan of the building as well. Um, but is there, is there a way that um, the operational expenditure up front can be measured um, such that the savings that may be applied across that lifespan um, can be applied to the operational cost and the, the savings that you might save across, say, 25 years and the amount of water or waste that you might save? I don't know how how you guys deal with that. Is it that you just take the, um, the base building cost, you take over that operation and you run it? Is there a way that th those savings can be shared? Because obviously we represent both the developer or the owner of the buildings, but also we, we represent the operators at the same time. And we can see that there's, there's a huge opportunity for the two to work closer together, not just the application of brand guidelines, but around how we build better to operate better as well. Sure, when you, when you have savings at, at all levels, that will be shared definitely with the, with, with the owners through the profitability. And any, any saving on energy or any saving on, on, on the cost, uh, that will go down to the bottom line and will be shared with the, with the owners uh, uh, directly by having the this, this savings. So uh, yes, <coughs> over, over the years, and uh, what will be introduced to make sure that the energy cost is, is uh, uh, changed, uh, reduced, uh, uh, the way uh, it, it, it is uh, operating, definitely. C can I ask, is, is that a model that, that is in play at the moment? Is it a model that, that you guys as operators use with your, with your owners? Yeah, definitely. We, we, we use it uh, uh, constantly when we... Uh, uh, like I said earlier, uh, the, the maintenance team is on, 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 on the floor, the, the, uh, the, the new technology that we're talking about, the, the applications that tells you where you have some leakages or where you have some areas that you need to look at because the uh, increase of uh, consumption here or an increase in consumption in, in that uh, area. So all these uh, will reduce by having the uh, on-time uh, you know, uh, feedback, ha having, having this, right. these technologies that will give you on-time feedback of where the uh, leakage is or where the high consumption is. That can you, I, can, you, you, yeah. you can, you know, proactive and go. Can I add to what Paul is saying? That <coughs> I think we need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. The, uh, we were earlier talking about maintenance. We've looked at hotels in the past, whether it's in Saudi Arabia or elsewhere, that were unbranded. We walked into these hotels. Um, we asked, so how, how old is this hotel? Did it open 20 years ago or 25 years ago? The answer is no, we opened five years ago. When it comes to maintenance, if the hotel is proper, properly maintained, that hotel is not supposed to look 20 years old when it's only five years old. That's the maintenance element uh, and the operational element. Now, before we get to the hotel opening, what's very important, talking about sustainability and and IT and uh, design and functionality. And Spencer, you said one very good point. Uh, a good design doesn't necessarily mean more expensive. Yeah. It's the fact that owners need to get the right project team in place. And now that entails design, functionality, IT, sustainability, uh, back of house, flow. Uh, it, it covers every aspect of the development process. We've been in situations where we've recommended consultants. They, say, they may seem 20, 30% more expensive, but not hiring these consultants will cost you millions more later on. 
So the overall picture is it all starts in the development process and it continues throughout the life cycle of the asset. Okay. I just, just added to that as well and just yeah. maybe bring it back to like brand standards and you know, <laughs> ultimately whether, whether it's CapEx or OpEx, um, you know, there, there is going to be a cost right, to, to, to bring in these, these elements that you know, um, are required. So whether it's CapEx or OpEx, it, even at a sale, at an exit, you know, if, if, if you're you know, not investing into that particular uh, facility or plant or whatever it is, ultimately the incoming buyer is going to have to kind of, um, you know, take that into account if he wants to continue to, to, to have that brand on, on, on the property. And that will be a deduction from his value. But, um, yeah, and I think Eddie's right, right? I mean, in terms of the, the development life cycle, um, that's factored in at the... You know, at the, at, the, at, the, at the start of the project, right? And that's part of the, if it's not brought in at the development stage, it's gonna manifest itself through operations and, and exit. So, but you're right, I think in terms of, you know, sustainability and, and, and our standards and how we incorporate that, it's not only operations, but it's, it's yeah. through the, 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 the um, design process. And we've got a sustainability, you know, champion within our, uh, within every, every function within our organization to make sure and you know we've got a very aligned organization that everybody understands exactly you know what what uh, our goal is and whether it's you know the passive design elements you were talking about that's um, that, that is a key element of uh, of our approach as well um, maybe a difficult question but we we all know of some branded rundown properties um, that exist in different markets and what is it that you as brands can do to convince the owner about uplifting their properties? What kind of argument? And if, if they don't want, what is it that you can do? What are your solutions? None of, none of these guys want to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, this, this, is, this is about, you know, you, um, you, you talk about bringing other brands into your older properties, into your portfolios. Um, it's about the refurbishment, the cyclic refurbishment. How do you... Um, how do you maintain the standard of some of the properties that you've inherited or some of the properties that are perhaps a little bit older, a little bit dated? How do you, how do you make sure? Yeah. We, we know how to do it. We, we refurbish, we do whatever. But how do you, how do you enforce the, the yeah. brand um, let me standards let me, let me over, the, over the longer period? It's not a question I, I would like to answer very much. <laughs> I, I, but I I'll, thought not. I'll take one for the team. And um, <laughs> one thing... Uh, it's going to be a very, very blunt discussion. It's going to cause me some issues with the owners, but I'll, we, we can handle it. Um, we handle, I'm speaking on behalf of ourselves, conversions differently to new builds, right? And who, who's been to our reception, uh, evening reception last night at the Radisson Riyadh Airport? Uh, many of you have, and I think it was a fantastic event in my unbiased opinion, right? It's um, that property, and our owners are sitting in the room today, right now. That property we signed two and a half years ago. It was uh, supposed to be an accommodation for the aviation, for the, uh, for, the, for the airport. We walked in, and we found the opportunity, and we worked within the framework of that building, and we converted into it into a 500-key Radisson Hotel and service apartments. And it's phenomenally fantastic since it opened three months ago. If I tell you this is the structure of a Radisson Hotel, I'll say no. But we found a way to work around that structure to try to implement our brand standards as much as possible. And we did that in the lobby, in the rooms. We did not break any, too many walls unless it was necessary for FLS compliance. We made sure the brand elements are there. We didn't remove any marbles or uh, cause unnecessary costs for the owner. So that's how we approach that property. When it comes to a new build, we, implement, we try to be a bit more efficient in, for the sake of the owner, not for the sake of the brand, because we can still implement the brand elements in every building, but it's mostly for the sake of the owner, so they don't, they don't incur more costs in the future, because these owners, if they are to rebuild that hotel from scratch, they would build it differently. That's our approach. Thank you, and perhaps um, one last topic um, on, um, on, on the CapEx that we were discussing with Spencer is that what are your views on Closing a property for innovation or doing it phased? I mean, it's a really good, it's a really good question because revenue is king, isn't it? Um, so mm -hmm. the, the, way, the way we approach it is it depends on how deep that refurbishment has got to go um, and how much work you've got to do to maintain your brand. But ultimately, the, the ultimate game is to, 
to keep as many rooms open as possible, to, to phase the approach without disruption to whatever you're doing within that property, and to get the, to get the rooms upgraded, completely enhanced, whatever it might be, brand changed, to make sure that that property comes back online as quickly as possible. Because every room, every room is that's right? offline is, is cost or revenue that you guys have lost. Um, and I guess you do it differently as well. Some, it depends on the standard, the, the standard of the of the property itself. You know, your your guests in certain properties will not want disruption, so you do a quick close and a quick hit, full refurbishment, versus the the phased approach to doing a room at a time or a floor at a time. I guess you guys take different approaches for different fact, levels of property. In our case, it varies from property to property, market to market, owner to owner. Yeah. It does vary. It yeah. Also, you need, it's, it's on a you know. It, it, you need to take each hotel, you know, on its own merits, right? And and you could be talking about, you know, a twenty year period, you know, from, from when that hotel was initially branded to you know, to when there's a decision, okay, do we do we reinvest, do we continue to reinvest in the brand, right? And it might be that, you know, through external obsolescence that product is no longer kind of relevant in that in that site, right? So does it make sense to continue to reinvest into that particular brand? And you know, that's a decision that, that we discuss, you know, with our owners. And, and you know, if it, if it is, if, it, if it's economically viable, right, we don't want to have owners that are not successful, it's does, it does not good for them, it's not good for us, um, then we look at what are the alternatives, right, which, are, which of our other brands might kind of fit within that whilst, you can, whilst still kind of achieving those brand pillars. Um, so that's a kind of reflag scenario, but if, if you know, if, we still can't kind of come to some agreement then, then ultimately there might be an, an, an agreement to kind of amicably, amicably um, part ways, which, which happens, right? And, um, but I think ultimately it's, it's, it's a, it has to be a discussion, you know, be, between, between the owner and, and, and the brand, whether that kind of reinvestment and, you know, into the pillars and into the identity that I kind of spoke about originally is, is makes sense. Um, we've, been fortunate enough to have, you know, a very strong loyalty base of owners, um, which I think reflects our, our our willingness to discuss and to work things out. You know, sixty over sixty percent of our our new hotels that are under development come from existing owners. So mm -hmm. I think hopefully that in, in this region, in fact, in this country, it's even more than that. Um, but hopefully that illustrates, you know, that there is a, a, a commercial discussion. I mean, Hilton was, was, was born from an, a, an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial guy called Conrad Hilton, and we continue that, that spirit. But it has to, you know, we, at the end of the day, we don't want to, um, you know, the, the brand is there, you know, um, to deliver the experience to the guest and, and the value proposition to the owner. If we, if we can't be consistent on that, then we're not doing any justice to our, to our other owners. And it's going to have, have an impact, you know, long term on the brand. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of And our, so to stay relevant, you have to continue revitalizing, reinvesting in your brand. It's that process. It's, that, it's just is, that process is, uh, of continually, you know, that brand discovery. Are we still relevant, you know, to the, to the guests? Is it still relevant to the developer? Okay, what do we need to do to make it relevant? Is it IT? Is it sustainability? Is it government enforced re regulation? You know, what is it? And I think you know, for the, you know, I think these are probably the these are probably the areas that you will see changes to, 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 to brand standards because, and you have to stay ahead of it. You know, especially the IT. If you, if you're not ahead of the IT, if you're not pioneering, and that, you know, if you're not pioneering the industry or very close to it, then you're going to be left behind pretty quick. Um, which is why, you know, Hilton's pioneered this industry, you know, pretty much as, you know, the industry you know today, we, we've developed a lot of those key characteristics where it's the first, uh, you know, airport hotels or first mini bars in hotels or uh, the first to run cold water, you know, these were all innovations at the time, right? And people, you know, we introduced those brand standards. Might seem not like much now, but back then it was. It was the first female, you know, uh, centric program way before its day, way before this was even considered. And that, you have to stay ahead of that curve because if, you're, if you lose that relevance, then, then your brand starts to lose its value and ultimately it's going to affect your asset. And even more for assets that are in competitive markets such as what Saudi has become now. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We have um, uh, one minute left. If uh, anyone from the... Please, Fahad. Is there a microphone? Yeah. Is that it? 
There's one question there. I think. <laughs> Yeah. It's coming, it's coming. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I can hear you, sorry. Thank you. This for, was a very informative discussion. Uh, your question about uh, the renovation, uh, convincing of the owners. I think this is a topic that is very important also to listen to the investors or owners' perspective on it. And I believe brands should show uh, flexibility. Owners normally will not be reluctant to renovate unless the performance of the brand in the past few years were not up to expectations. So the brand should initiate uh, an incentive to the owner to take the step for renovation. These incentives could be in terms of uh, the, owner, the brand giving more uh, attention to that specific property, to enhance its performance or uh, some fee breaks for the future period because normally these renovations will come at the first 25% or 30% of the life of the contract so there is still more years to come so if they take the initiative to offer some incentive to the owner to encourage them to do this uh, renovation and I'm not saying that they put equity but you know, <laughs> you know at least some fee breaks uh, for for a certain period of time where the uh, owner or investor would be really encouraged. Normally, the owner is really keen to keep their assets up to the standards. But if the performance is not doing well, uh, whether it's market, whether it's the brand performance, they should look into ways to uh, work together on it, not only uh, leaving it to the owner to s take all the consequences and the brand will just focus on their benefit instead. We agree. Thank In fact, okay. uh, we, have, we have a few hotels together. We fully agree. But also, uh, we want to anticipate. We don't want to go through two years of uh, reduced performance. We want to anticipate that reduced performance. So it's, it's always a discussion. It's always a dialogue on when to start the renovation. We'd rather avoid going through two years of a dip. We'd rather do it before that happens. But yes, it's an ongoing dialogue, and we're happy to have that discussion. And th 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 there is perhaps another aspect is that uh, you have different business models in your own company, management agreement versus franchise. Yes. And quite often with franchise, you have better control of the asset. So, um, Correct. No, no, I'm not speaking about uh, my company uh, perspective. It's in general. In general, of course. I've been in this industry for long to know what are the concerns of the owners. And <clears throat> seeing the uh, approach that brands are taking to this, uh, to me it is not very much open to discuss options, to uh, assist and, you know, and, and going forward. They always take, you know, you know, it's a one or two properties from their thousands of properties. So, uh, you know, the owner is really uh, emotionally attached to the, such a property. He wants to show, to see the brand also showing the same emotional attachment and support. So... But by, by phasing out, uh, uh, the, the uh, process over a, a period of time between 18, 24 months uh, or maybe longer, uh, it will help not only uh, uh, on the budgeting of, of, of the renovation, it also will help on making sure that the uh, revenue is ongoing coming as well. So it's not uh, a full shutdown on, 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 of the project. Correct. It's yeah. an ongoing phases over 24 uh, it's Ongoing 24 phases, months. and if the, the brand shows that, okay, if I renovate, your performance will be exactly better, and they could get, give the, some... The renovation part of the first yeah, phase... Yeah, they, they could give some guarantees in more. that performance. They should also somehow guarantees on such a performance how it's going to be in the in the future exactly so uh, i agree you know we have the ffne reserve as always uh, you know a, a safeguard for this but normally it's not enough however you know <laughs> but if it's done properly over the year the ffne it will increase the, the lifetime of, of the yeah company. theoretically Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> I'm afraid we've run out of time. I like the fact that we've opened discussions between owners and operators, so that's great. So I'm sure you can have a brilliant conversation afterwards too. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you for your discussion. <laughs>